Hi, I'm Dave Geithner, and for the next couple of minutes, I'm going to talk to you about a subject that we tend to get often on our uh, community forum or through talking with new customers or new operators that are looking to get into the wireless uh, distribution business, and that is the topic of antenna alignment. Now, you might think that antenna alignment is somewhat of a simple task when you kind of look at the whole operations. So, uh, relatively speaking, it might be, but it, it, still, there are a number of different things that you want to understand to become experts at al aligning uh, antennas and understanding the importance of antenna alignment. Um, you know, you think you just kind of put an antenna up on a building, point it at the other, other antenna, generally speaking, and away you go. Well, yes, but you don't necessarily get an optimized link. You don't get the best performance. You don't get the best availability if that's all you do. So what do you want to do? We'll go through a couple of a couple of simple steps, uh, hopefully in a short amount of time here, to kind of get you going. So first things first, uh, before you ever touch any antenna or any subscriber and start to go up onto a building or some kind of an asset to, to mount these things up, you want to do some homework. You want to do some planning. Link Planner is a tool that's freely available from Cambium Networks. You can find it on our website, and that will allow you to create models. And without going through the whole story about Link Planner, generally when you're done doing your modeling for the type of product that you're doing, whether it's uh, an access point solution or whether it's a point-to-point -point solution or what have you, it generates an installation report. That installation report is your installer's guideline of what he should expect to see when he puts these antennas up on the assets that you've defined, whether it's towers, buildings, or, or what have you, poles. Um, and see how the radio is performing, see what, the, what we would call RSSI, radio receiver signal strength, which is one of the, probably the, one of the main things that we're looking at when we're trying to align antenna to its best performance. So use the Link Planner, generate reports that give baselines to the installers that are gonna be putting up these antennas so they can know what to expect and know what to aim for when they're trying to look and seeing if the radio is performing the best it can. All right, so that's the first aspect. The second aspect, and maybe it kind of blends in a little bit with the first aspect, is understand what type of antenna product or what type of radio solution that you're actually deploying. So for instance, understanding how you're aiming a access point solution that has a very wide beam width covering large swaths of uh, earth is very different than when you're using a point-to-point -point product and trying to install that and align it. So quickly, for, for instance here, this is a PMP450 uh, access point, as an example anyways, and the antenna. This antenna, generally speaking, has a 9 degree uh, beam width. You would see that as you're planning it out on Link Planner. And the way that you would be uh, installing this type of a solution more often is that you're looking for a landmark when, you're, uh, you, when your installers are uh, aiming this thing. So some kind of a, a visual that you know is in the right bearing that you're trying to install and, and provide services for. Some operators or installers actually do some kind of a paint on the ground uh, at 100 meters or a couple hundred meters out from the, the tower base so they can align with that. You would think perhaps just using a compass, why not just use a compass? Go up on the tower, pull your compass out and start using that as your bearing. Generally speaking, uh, a lot of times you'll find that compasses are not that accurate when you're up on a large metal object such as a tower. Uh, and so people don't tend to want to use that as their uh, you know, particular guide. So landmark is probably the most used uh, scenario for actually doing some kind of initial alignment and directional placement of, a, uh, of an access point. One other quick thing about this before we'll move on is the other aspect of this is understanding how to set down tilt. Down tilt is something you absolutely need to understand when you're doing some kind of an access point um, uh, installation. Typically you'll have two aspects, uh, a mechanical type down tilt and in some of our uh, newer antenna solutions they actually have built-in electrical down tilts. So you got to take both of those into account. So down tilt is what's going to give you uh, this type of an angle when you're putting this up on a tower and as you can potentially tell for some of the newer installers when you're when you're having a a device that's down to at a high degree, you're pulling your coverage in. So if you're only wanting to get a couple miles, you'd have a heavy down tilt. If you want to get 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 miles, uh, you'd have perhaps just a, a parallel, no down tilt at all. So anyways, down tilt is uh, another thing you got to understand a lot about when you're doing access solutions. Let's move on, still on the PMP solution, but let's move now to subscriber modules. 
So a subscriber module, whether we're talking about a PMP 450 subscriber module, something that would actually go on a home or on a residence or in a building, or even some of the EPMP, the early EPMP type radios, the EMP 1000. Uh, these guys also have some procedures and tools available for them for aligning them. Um, so again, Link Planner provides information about how not only the access point is installed, but how the subscriber module would be installed. There are um, information available through the GUI that you can connect to either via laptop. And even now we have a Android app, which I'm sure you're going to be seeing a forthcoming video or some marketing information on that uh, pretty, pretty soon. An app called CN Archer that uh, it allows you to wirelessly connect into uh, the radio and communicate with CN Maestro, communicate with uh, the radio, communicate with what GPS locations you're currently at. And all that information gets configured into the radio. You do some throughput tests, you do some baseline tests, it gets recorded on the app, and that app is now your documentation for baselining how exactly this device was aimed, where it was aimed, how it was located, how it was performed, was in, when it was installed. Uh, one last thing on the subscriber modules. So there are, there are certainly some antenna augmentation devices such as this, a, a clip or a lens. Uh, you can put that guy on for one of two different reasons. Uh, people often think I, I need a little additional gain, I'm going a little further distance, so I'm gonna use this uh, device to add, this adds roughly around seven, eight, nine dB worth of gain to the, uh, what we call the Naked SM. But not only does it do gain, which is sometimes you need, sometimes you don't need gain. What you need is uh, interference isolation because you're in a very noisy environment where the subscriber is installed. So you might use this guy just to try to weed out the noise because this actually narrows the beam, not only in the outgoing, but on the incoming. So if there's noise over here trying to come in, this helps isolate some of that uh, noise. All right, then lastly, we'll move over here point-to-point -point type solutions. So when you typically see a radio with a dish, uh, such as what you see here, this is uh, unlicensed, this is a license type solution with our PTP820. These are a different scenario for in installing and aiming, simply because you have two very narrow beam solutions on both ends of the link. So you have to typically find yourself doing, well, first off, like we always said with everything else, Link Planner is your guide for creating a baseline. Document what you're gonna do, and then your installers know what to expect when they're on the tower. But then when they are in the tower and they're installing these, it's often kind of a uh, go on a horizontal type of sweep pattern up and down, and then go on a vertical type of sweep pattern up and down until you get to that highest point, lock it in, do the same thing for the other side, lock it in, look at your link planner report, am I close? If I'm not close, reconcile. Am I on a side lobe? Is there some problem that I didn't uh, consider? I can see maybe it's a non-line of sight path when I planned it as a line of sight path, so on and so forth. So for all of your installations, always reconcile what you get in the real world to what you planned out in your planning tool. All right, so that's probably about as much as I wanna kind of go through for right now. You can find more information about antenna alignment and tools that are available to you on our Cambium website and our Cambium forum. Thank you very much.